Hello Taurus, welcome to Soul Good. I'm Amber Marie and this is your September 2022 Tarot Scope. If you're curious about the decks that I'm using today, you can find a list of them in the description box below. You can also find links to my social media accounts as well as links to information on personal readings and the Soul Good membership channel on Telegram. So I would like to remind you, Taurus, before we begin, that this is a general reading, not a personal reading. So please only take what resonates and leave the rest. Okay. Um, we are going to be looking at a lot of different information today, but I do want to share with you that September has felt very much to me like a month of transition, um, transformation, right? I feel like it's going to appear or manifest differently for everyone, depending on where they're at in their soul journey, right? Um, I feel like for some, it may feel a bit chaotic, a bit turbulent, challenging, um, overwhelming, right? For, especially for those that are just kind of beginning to question their reality and are starting to awaken. For those who have maybe been in the healing game, if you will, for a little bit, I feel like it's not going to feel as turbulent, but I do feel like we're going to be triggered by some of these more deep seated or deep rooted things, because I feel like we are on the spiritual fast track, as it were. It feels very much to me like divine creator kicked things up a notch and was like, listen, this is where we need to be. So ready or not, here we go. Right. So just a little kind of forewarning as it were, um, as we move into the month of September. So let's jump in and see what the month is bringing for you. Please, Father, Mother, Life, Universe, Spirits, Guides, Angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves. What does Taurus need to know for September 2022, please? What might Taurus experience for the month of 2022? What's going on for Taurus, please? Oh, okay. Thank you. Lots of cards coming out for you, Taurus. Lots. Let's get your tarot. What else do we need to know for Taurus, please? Yep. Thank you. What? Okay. Okay. Thank you. And why is this important for Taurus's journey? Why is this happening? Okay. Thank you. You're a chatty bunch. <laughs> All right. And why is this happening or what changes might this bring for our soul journey? Why is this important for our soul journey or what would this change, please? Why is this important for our soul journey or what changes might this experience bring? Thank you. Just one card for you. All right, we're also going to be looking or checking in with the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine energies for the sign of Taurus. So depending on where you're sitting, you may be a male and feminine energy or a female and masculine energy, or you could feel balanced. You may resonate with both of these energies. So just know that, all right? Um, so what can we, or rather, what do we need to know about Taurus Divine Masculine, please? What's going on for Taurus Divine Masculine? What's, what's going on for Taurus Divine Masculine? Thank you. And Taurus Divine Feminine, please. What's going on for Taurus Divine Feminine? going on for Taurus Divine Feminine? I just got the word adjustment. So I feel for some Divine Feminines, there are adjustments that are being made or have been made, or maybe you're trying to adjust to a new way of being or new surroundings or something like that. Um, but I am getting the word adjustment. So what else? Or yes, thank you. Okay, so let me just move these out of the way so we can jump in. Okay, Taurus. So first off, we have in the reverse or shadow attribute position, the engineer. Reliance on mechanistic solutions without regard for emotional consequences. 
right? So this feels very much to me like a very logical approach to things. I want to share with you that this energy for me can come through for you. Okay. So I'm picking up that it could come through for you either through your own psyche, your own consciousness, or it could be shown to you in your external reality. Okay. But this feels, it feels very much to me like this energy to, it's, it's almost like being very logical about things, um, very robotic, right? And it's interesting because this feels, it almost feels like this may be an external energy. I don't know where this is coming from, but it almost feels to me like this could be somebody who you, it's like you want to get deeper with, but they won't allow it or something like that. Like it feels very robotic or very withdrawn or very, I don't know, emotionless, very detached, but in like an unhealthy way, right? Yeah, I just, I just feel like this is somebody who is, is not very in touch with their, um, empathic nature, right? If, and I mean, that could be because they don't allow themselves to feel right. And if this is your energy, this could be something that is shown to you within your own psyche, right? You might be triggered by something or someone else may trigger you, right? Um, and know that if those things are coming up, that it is for you, it is for you to be able to see it so that you can transcend it. And I'm getting some fear energy as well. So I do feel like you're releasing fears. Um, maybe this is somebody who you want to step back from, but there's been a fear around that for some reason. I don't know what this is. It's very interesting to me, this energy. Um, we do have the mystic here in the upright or light attribute position, revels in intimate union with the divine. So for some of you, I feel like you're growing or no, that's not the word strengthening. Thank you. Strengthening your connection with your divine creator. For some of you, I feel like you may have recently uh, experienced some sort of calling by or from what you may refer to as God or the universe or your creator or whatever, right? Like, I feel like there's been some sort of, um, this, this, <laughs> I'm being shown it like almost as if God came and tapped you on the shoulder, right? And was like, Hey, like you're supposed to be doing this or pay attention to this. Or I'm calling you, right? Like I'm, and actually I'm being very re reminded right now of, um, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to think of what the verse is. Okay. I'm really not. Um, but it is like, I've called you by name. You are mine, right? I, I don't know what verse from the Bible that is, but that is how I'm seeing it almost as if God tapped you on the shoulder. And I feel like it stirred something within you, right? I've, for some of you, I feel like there's this energy of recently kind of opening that door, if you will, letting God in, in a sense. Um, and I feel like it may be something that's kind of changed your life a bit, right? And it, even if it's just how you look at life, right? Even if you haven't seen like the manifestation, the physical manifestation of those changes, I do feel like there's been a profound impact made by that experience. For some of you, I feel like it's like, okay, there's something more here. There's been, there's something that I've been missing. Wow. We also have the priest in the upright or light attribute position facilitates spiritual commitments, serves as a channel of spiritual energy. So for some of you, maybe you felt like the presence of God or the presence of Christ, or maybe you've felt like you've been getting information from things that you cannot see with your physical eyes. Or from places that you don't quite understand or can't really put a name to, right? It feels to me like th this has been something of a shift, quite a shift spiritually, like in your soul, I feel. It, it feels like a strengthening, like it feels like my heart space is like bursting open, right? Like I feel like there's something there, like something, oh yes, thank you. Something about this experience 
tugged at your heartstrings is how it's being shown to me. You may have even gotten emotional about this. We have the student in the upright or light attribute position, humility and devotion to knowledge, openness to lifelong learning. Yeah, and this actually, this experience may have also opened your eyes like, mm, there's so much more here for me to learn. Like, I thought I knew what was going on, but I didn't. I really, truly didn't, right? I feel like if this applies to you, especially coming from the mystic and the priest into this student card, it feels very much to me like there's been this eye-opening experience that's really opened up your soul, opened up your heart, opened up your your um, mind, right? And I feel like there's been this acknowledgement, if you will, of like, I thought I knew things, but like, I didn't really, right? And there's so much more for me to learn. And so I feel like there's a peak in curiosity as well, Um Yeah, it just feels to me like there's this energy of like, there's so much more for me to figure out, right? Like, but there's an excitement about it. There's a like, gosh, there's so much for me to learn versus a like a burdensome energy, right? It's not like, oh my gosh, like I'm not done learning. No, it feels more like an excitement to like a curiosity that's being, what is the word, um, fueled, right? We also have the servant in the reverse or shadow attribute position, using the lack of money as an excuse not to move forward with life. Interestingly, I feel like this card is coming through in a way that you may have learned something recently or will through the month of September around this victim mentality, right? This lack mentality. I feel like there's something here that may be triggered this month that really kind of opened your eyes to where you may have been feeding that lack mentality or sitting in a victim energy and it's put limits on you. You've allowed it to put limits on you and actually have used it kind of as your own wall, right? Um, some people want something but they fear like not being enough right because they don't have enough schooling they don't have enough knowledge they haven't had enough practice right who are they to essentially and so they will ultimately sabotage themselves or limit themselves from moving forward because they don't feel like they are enough to do so Right. So this lack mentality comes from this fear of not being not having enough, not being enough. But it is boil. It does or rather boil down to fear. So I feel like this could be shown to you right where you may have done this or where you may have allowed this mentality to kind of stir and you've allowed it to be fed. Right. Uh, or or. This could also show up in people that you interact with. Right. So for example, let's say you're around people who are sitting in this victim mentality and you're like, I cannot even right now. Right. It feels like almost like an annoyance. So I feel like there could potentially be something here either triggered within yourself where you see yourself sitting in that lack of mentality or see where you may have been doing so, or it shows up in other people and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. We are not doing that. Right. We also have the teacher, interesting, in the reverse or shadow attribute position, manipulating or abusing students, teaching negative traits and destructive skills. That's interesting because the student is here in the upright, so it's that willingness to learn and openness to learn. I feel like there could be some people who... You may be, actually, you may see this because I feel like you've learned a lot, right? I feel like you've learned a lot and I feel like there's something in here where you're learning how to trust your intuition or what you feel to be true, right? Um, those nudges that you get, I feel like maybe you're learning how to trust them um, because I feel like for some of you, you have, you've been doing this or you've like 
done it and it's worked out. Right. But for, and it's interesting because I feel like in doing so, when these people appear who try to teach something that doesn't resonate, that doesn't feel like unconditional love or what have you, it's like, oh, I see you, boo. Right? Like that's how it's coming across to me. So for some of you, you may have kind of picked up on this radar, if you will, of being able to spot these people who are trying to teach resistant or negative things. Right. Um, for others of you, I feel like some could have, could potentially see where they have been essentially teaching people certain things in order to get a result that they want. And it's, it's kind of like when you're arguing with somebody and you're trying to get them to see your point of view, right? And you're trying to convince them that your way is the only way. That's kind of how I'm seeing that. I don't know. That may be somebody in your life, but, or, or, or it could be you, right? Like trying to control an outcome because you've learned like a manipulative technique or, or something you kind of fell into it. I don't know. Again, this could be your energy. It could be someone else in your life or someone around you. Maybe your mother, because here it is in the reverse or shadow attribute position. Smothering or abandoning children. Instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. I mean, potent okay, so for some of you, I feel like your, your mother um, may have potentially utilized certain things. Or, or put into practice certain things to try to make you feel small or, you know, something like that. Like try to keep you in a box kind of energy. And then as you try to step out of that and establish your own way of being, there comes this guilt or this punishment, if you will for doing so right I don't know what this is you guys but I feel like I don't know so I feel like I need to move this it feels to me like some of you may have moved away from this energy or want to or will eight of swords you guys cannot make this up Age of Swords is that energy of imprisonment, self-victimization, entrapment, that sort of thing. If you notice in the picture there, in the mirror, she's bound. She's blindfolded. She can't see. Outside of the mirror, she's free. That limitation is in her own mind, right? And it's interesting that that comes up because we were talking about, you know, that lack mentality being limiting or that victim mentality being limiting, Right. So here it is showing up. Like, I feel like this could be something that's triggered for you for this month. I really do. And I feel like, you know, your sword, that sword's energy is the mind. So it's going to require you to change your mindset. Right. Damn. Two of swords too. And the reverse. This is an energy of a stalemate and indecision. It's not moving forward. Right. And I mean, I don't know, maybe you're finding yourself at this crossroads where you're like, what's the lesser of two evils here, right? But if you would just like take the blindfold off, right? Or, or even better, trust your intuition and take a step forward, right? Like staying there is not going to serve you at all. You're just going to remain stuck, right? So there's an energy here of needing to make a choice. Do you want to continue to be stuck in the same cycles and experience the same things? Or do you want to move forward? Because it's going to require you putting into action what you, what you want to, like the change, right? In order for the change to occur. And again, swords is that mental energy. So get out of your own head. Stop overthinking things, right? Stop allowing those stories and that bullshit nonsense, the programming, the trauma, the wounding, all of these things your egoic tendencies, your ego drives, like 
Stop allowing them to limit you and control you. Free yourself from that, right? Make a decision. We have as well the Knight of Swords. There's so much mind energy here. And a lot of it is not necessarily beneficial. Knight of Swords in the reverse is an energy of not having any direction, being very unpredictable. Um, it can also be this energy of a disregard for consequences or not taking action. Knight of Swords in the upright is action. Can be a little bit impulsive even, like just doing it. Right in the reverse, it's like you're not moving, you're not, you have, you're not doing nothing. And this is, this is the same energy, stuck energy. These are things that need to be released, that need to be let go of so that you can move forward. And if these are people that you're around that are like this, I feel like it's time for you to move away from them because they're limiting you. Their energy is polluting yours. That's how it feels to me. Right? If that resonates with you, is this being an external party or people? Their energy is polluting yours. Okay? You're buying and selling their beliefs. Two of Cups. This is an energy of connection, partnership, unity. Right? And here's the thing. Like, maybe this has to do with a relationship. Two of Cups is often like a soulmate type card, right? Though it doesn't necessarily have to be about soulmates. But maybe there have been some stories or some mental fuckery going on that's prevented you from truly coming together with someone in a partnership where you're giving equally, right? Or in some sort of unified connection, even if that's just with yourself. And what you want and what you what's fulfilling to you because cups is emotions and feelings. Right? So I feel like there's an energy here. It's almost like you're craving unity and connection. But whatever this is, is stopped you dead in your tracks. And I mean, maybe this is. For some of you, I feel like this could be a past energy revolving around your connection with the creator, God, the universe, whatever label you put on it, right? But it, your soul's been craving that and it's been your mind that's been preventing you from establishing that connection or um, what is the word? Sustaining it. Thank you. Damn, the world in reverse. I mean, this is incompletion, emptiness. That's what I was saying. Like, I feel like you're craving this unity, this connection, right? And I find it fascinating that we have the world here in reverse that is this energy of being empty. Again, for some of you, this these are your partnerships. These are your relationships with friends and family and perhaps even lovers, okay, for some of you. Where there's, it's not filling your cup. It's there, there's, there's emptiness there. And I feel like if this resonates with you, you know, this, you know, exactly who I'm talking about. For some of you, it could be your mother or a teacher figure. For others of you, it could be somebody who's very robotic. Maybe it's you, right? Maybe you're craving that connection with yourself. Either way, there's a need to like, heal and 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 allow yourself to move forward yeah yeah king of wands that is this energy of like seeing the bigger picture and overcoming challenges taking that leadership position right this is that energy of it's leo energy which is very um what is the word i'm looking for motivated thank you very motivated right very creative, very fun loving, right? Very brave. And I feel like this is, then this is, I feel like how you get to this feeling of connection, this feeling of unity, this feeling of closure and completion and harmony, right? Is by essentially stepping into that Leo bravery, right? And really overcoming these challenges, overcoming your own mind, 
changing your mindset and changing your energy, right? I feel like this is going to take seeing things from a bigger perspective. And I also get the feeling that it's going to take you understanding how these things help you and grow you. So why is this happening? Octorian light codes, evolutionary downloads, recalling power, future thinking. Yes, recalling your power, taking back your power from this mental fuckery that's been going on, that's been running you around in circles, that's keep, kept you limited and trapped, that's prevented you from moving forward or prevented you from believing in yourself, from seeing future you and wanting to get there or believing even that you can get there. Right? This is important for your growth, for you to step back into your power. We also have here soul star activation, fulfilling soul contracts, remembering who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Remembering who you are, right? I feel like it's time to allow this closure to come in, but you have to remember who you are and move out of your own mind, right? Especially if you've been sitting in, in any victim or lack mentality, right? Imprisoning yourself. Okay, I feel like this is you're moving through this energy, right? Allow, re, again, remembering who you are, remembering your power. Halls of Amenti secrets, or excuse me, Halls of Amenti initiation, secrets revealed, treasures uncovered, and initiations. Now, what I find fascinating about this particular card showing up for you is that you have this treasures uncovered. And I got this energy of having some sort of connection with divine spirit, whatever that looks like, right? Maybe it's like God tapping you on the shoulder. Maybe it's feeling the energy of Christ. Maybe it's experiencing um, your ancestors or loved ones who've passed on. Maybe it's dreams. I don't know what that looks like for you, Taurus, but I feel like there have been treasures uncovered, right? It's like you've reached a certain level and then things start accelerating as it were. I think you're learning things about yourself, right? And maybe it's this whole mind battle game that's kept you from really truly sinking into that. Okay. And that might be what the secrets that are being revealed to you, showing you like, Hey, you're keeping yourself trapped here. There's something we should do about this, right? There's healing that needs to be done. And no, if it's brought to your attention, it is for you to be able to heal it and move through it. We have third eye, yep, third eye activation, brow chakra, inner vision, clear seeing. Yes, again, right? Really, I feel like these things are being brought to the forefront for you. You're being shown these things so you can heal them and transmute them and move through them, right? And I do feel like this inner vision, this clarity is coming through, um, really allowing you to not only see yourself, but to see others, right? Again, if these are people around you, it's time to let go of them. I feel like you're gaining clarity on them and understanding like, okay, this is not in alignment with me. And it doesn't have to be just people. It can be food, music, TV, um, uh, jobs, living arrangements, you name it. Any, anything under the sun it can be what you wear even, right? So like, I feel like you're gaining this clarity on what feels good to you and what doesn't. And for some of you, I feel like this divine encounter or divine interaction probably played a big part in that. And holy shit, we have the divine matrix, interconnectedness, synchronicities and, or synchronicity, excuse me, and God incidences. I have goosebumps all over because again, I said it felt like God was like, Hey, <laughs> I feel like you're seeing the connectedness of things. And again, I feel like for some of you, you've seen what happens when you follow your intuition, because I feel like for some of you, things have just seemed to line up. Right. And I feel like you're learning how to trust that more and more. So here, why this is important for your soul journey or what may be changing because of this experience, we have open, say yes, expand through the extremes and trust life. So this is what you're gaining through this part of your journey through this month, right? Or have the opportunity to gain is to really open yourself up right? To really experience life, to see the bigger picture, to really see where you're able to grow and where you're able to learn and how you're able to move forward, right? I feel like this is really about you essentially. And I do feel like it's interesting to me that we have this energy of like self-imprisonment or self-victimization, um, right? And then we have open, like say yes, release yourself from this. That's kind of how I'm seeing that, okay? 
But I feel like this is important for this part of your journey because it is meant to teach you that you can trust life. You can trust God. You can trust your intuition, right? Your higher self, yourself, the things that you feel, you can trust them. And I feel like this is a big part of what you're learning. So for the Divine Masculine and what energy Divine Masculine might be in at this time, we have Dopamine by Born. And it might not be logical, but baby, my mind just won't let you leave. And I crave your taste under my tongue every day. Keep the forbidden fruit coming my way. I want to feel your sugar in my veins. Baby, I just want to feel. Okay, so with this energy coming through for this Divine Masculine, I feel like there is this, it, you know, it really feels like you may have been exposed to that divine nature, right? Or that divine energy. And it may feel like now you want to experience it more and more. So you may be seeking ways to do that. Maybe you're praying, maybe you're meditating, right? Maybe you're listening to um, certain like binaural beats when you go to sleep or something, right? To try to recreate or experience these things again um, or putting yourself in certain situations, maybe in silence and nature or something like that. Um, for others of you, I feel like you're trying to understand what's happening. Like, I feel like there's like, I like this feeling, but I don't quite get it yet. I don't know if I'm comfortable. I don't know what I want to feel yet. I'm still feeling it out kind of thing, right? So do know, like, if this applies to you, give yourself time to process that energy. Allow yourself to integrate it, work through it, right? You don't have to rush anything. And for the Divine Feminine, we have Messing Me Up by What So Not. I'm going to back me up. I'm going to set me off. I'm going to get me one. Going to regret me. Ugh. I, I'm going to set my fire. So Divine Feminine, I feel like you are stepping into your power, right? This energy here with the Octorian Light Codes, like recalling power, I feel like that applies to you very much so. I feel like you are stepping into this more confident, more powerful space. Uh, it feels to me like you're growing more comfortable with your decisions. And I feel like you are now making choices that are essentially for your own happiness. I feel like it's not so much about everyone else at this point. I feel like it's more about what makes me happy, what brings me joy, what is going to set me up for life, what is going to make me feel at the end of my life that I have lived a full, happy, joyous, life and I've experienced what I've wanted to, right? And I find it very interesting. I'm being very drawn to the fact that there's this like high priestess type of energy, right? And I, and I feel like you, if, for some of you, I feel like you're really sinking into your intuition and it's such a beautiful thing because I feel like things are unfolding, um, quite splendidly <laughs> for those who are really, truly like, um, taking risks if you will, and stepping into their fear and following their intuition, despite their fear, um, and making essentially like big moves. I feel like you are experiencing the alignment of the universe. And I feel like it's like, holy crap, this is amazing. Right. Uh, we also have here sweet nothing by Calvin Harris. You took my heart and you held it in your mouth. And with a word, all my love came rushing out and every whisper, it's the worst emptied out by a single word. There is a hollow in me now, right? So for some of you, I do feel like there are people in your life who are again, empty, very robotic. I feel like these are people whose words and things that they say, um, your inter or rather the interactions that you have with them, like you take them to heart. Um, you feel every bit of them. You take them very seriously. They impact you tremendously, right? And I do feel like, I'm sorry, because the ink is so light colored, you're probably not going to be able to read that. But I do feel like this is that energy of seeing where or who those people are, if this energy applies to you, and really deciding whether or not they are in alignment with who you are trying to become, or what you would like to become, what you want to experience, right? Where do they fit into that equation? Or do they fit at all? Okay. And finally, we have 
Middle of the Night by Ellie Du. I summoned you, please come to me. Don't bury thoughts that you really want. I fill you up, drink from my cup. Within me lies what you really want. And what's interesting about this energy right now, the thing that I'm getting with this is very much your intuition, right? Don't bury thoughts that you really want. Like don't bury those feelings that you're thinking, right? Like it's interesting because this energy is like, I summoned you, please come to me. But rather, I feel like it's your intuition speaking to you and asking you to listen, right? Don't bury the things that you really want. And then it says, I fill you up, drink from my cup, right? So in other words, the things that you follow, your intuition, that's fulfilling, right? It fills your soul. It's leading you to those things. And then it says, within me lies what you really want. Within your soul self, within your intuition, that's what you really want. Your soul truth, unconditional love, your connection with source. That's what you really want right? So, I mean, at the heart of it all, right? So I feel like this is really about you coming home to yourself, right? I feel like this is really about you trusting your intuition. I feel like this is really about you trusting your divine creator, universe, God, whatever you call it, right? And knowing like that is what sustains you, that energy, that, that source energy, that unconditional love is the most powerful force in the world, in the universe. It's so fucking powerful. And there's this energy here of like, within all, within that lies what you really want within unconditional love, within source energy. That's what, that is what you really want. Right. And, and, and I'm not trying to tell you what you want. Okay. That's just the energy that's coming through. It's like that, that connection right? That feeling of not being separate from, but a part of. That's what I'm getting here. So Taurus, that is what I have for you for the month of September. Thank you so much for being here. I truly do appreciate your time and energy. I hope that something here resonated for you for the month of September. If it did, please do the YouTube things by liking, sharing, and or subscribing. It really does help the channel to grow and tells YouTube that there may be something here for someone else. So I really do truly appreciate it. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are this month, have an amazing, amazing expansive, powerful, courageous month. Take care of your beautiful, beautiful soul. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.